Darkstar, what in the heck is going on with Fenway Sports Group, Rory McIlroy, and the PIF? You can't make this stuff up. So Rory McIlroy ha- is the captain of the Tomorrow Golf League uh, uh, franchise that's in Boston that's owned by the Fenway Group that is, of course, the principal mover and shaker in Strategic Sports Group that has now purchased the PGA Tour and the principal investor in PGA Tour Enterprises, P-Gate. Uh, and yet... Rory is now a piffer. Rory's a yeah. piffer. And you're saying that Fenway, John Henry, is representing a group of never piffers. So we got never piffers and piffers. And that was not the world three months ago or a year ago. Well, Where are we with all this? Where I, I am almost confused, but not really. We'll straighten it out for you, audience. But, but Darkstar, how do you see this? The piffers and the never well, piffers. Yeah, I, I think sadly, Rory, by trying to distance himself, has stepped in it again, stepped right in the middle. He had the phone call with Jordan Spieth because he stepped off the tech string with all these golfers. And I'm sure that conversation was very short in the sense of uh, Rory basically said, you know, Jordan, I'm trying to stay out of it. I, I, I obviously am European. I want to support my guys on Europe I and I think we would be crazy not to take an extra $3 billion from the PIP. And Spieth and the Finway group, there's enough never piffers now. You know, Spieth's comments basically stating we don't need the PIF anymore. So now you have this situation where you got a lot of never piffers. You got the Finway group who thinks they have enough money to make this thing go. And to be honest with you, they do. I mean, golf is not worth $12 billion like they're staying. It's <laughs> like they're stating. So... Mm. Yeah, Rory has stepped in it again. The whole Tomorrow Golf League, Finway Group relationship that he has is going to be a problem. Um, you know, well, you, obviously they, they, I think the Finway Group took Rory as sort of the number one draft choice. Um, to be captain of their team. Know, to be captain, to be captain of, the of the team. I mean, Boston, there's obviously a lot of Irish people in Boston, but there's a difference between the Republic of Irish, the, the Republic of Ireland and, and Northern Ireland. Now, obviously, they have Keegan Bradley, who is the local star. And if this thing blows up where Rory leaves, I, I would feel very badly for Keegan. That's just sort yeah. of my own aside because he is Boston through and through. He needs a new guardian angel, Keegan. You really He's a do. great – He, I, I like him. He's a good guy too. He but finally gets Ro- a fish. He finally gets something handed to him, Bradley, and it, now it's disintegrating right in front of him. Well, I think that's the sad thing. I think, I, I, as I had mentioned, if, I don't know, a couple months ago, I think the whole Tomorrow Golf League is going to disintegrate. It was a nice idea that they pulled out of the drawer to combat Liv. But let's be honest. The PGA Tour has been at war with Liv since day one, and they've been trying to run this covert war through the official world golf rankings. But now they're not even being covert about it. Let, let's be perfectly honest. Now, this is so ridiculous now what's going on. Um, you know, it's crazy. And they, they've, they've drawn the battle lines. It's the United States PGA Tour versus the PIF and the rest of the world. Well, and Rory, by trying to distance himself now, is he's the go-between. He's right in the, the damn middle again where he doesn't want to be. Well, and there was a thread running through all this. So the thread is that McElroy, now a piffer, after the 540 that we talked about a few episodes ago, he's a piffer and the lead cheerleader for Piff now to be part of uh, P-Gate, PGA Tour Enterprises. Um, and he has whatever. He has a, either a tiny little on-paper relationship with Fenway Group vis-a-vis the Tomorrow Golf League and being the captain of the Fenway Group's franchise team, uh, the Boston Common, I think it is. Um, it do, so is there dialogue, is the, the thread, is there dialogue between Fenway, John Henry, the owner of Fenway, principal guy in Fenway, and McElroy? And if there is, is, does that say something about where Fenway stands with uh, their view of PIF? And Dark Star is saying, nah, you're way off. You're not even in the vicinity. That's ridiculous. They they drafted McElroy. He's the captain of their team, but no, there's no relationship. No, there's nothing going on. Fenway and their uh, fellow investors in strategic sports groups don't want Piff involved, don't don't need Piff involved. And that is being uh, echoed by Jordan Spieth. And that's just the way it is. And Spieth and McElroy aren't seeing eye to eye now, so for whatever reason, 
McElroy is now a piffer over there with uh, that group and Fenway, Spieth, and the PGA Tour cabal down in uh, Ponte Vedra are never piffers now. Does that summarize it all, Dark Star? Yeah, that summarizes it. And remember, Jordan Spieth is not on a tomorrow golf league, nope. and he is at least smart enough to realize, hey, I'm going to wait and see where this that shakes out in a year or two because I, I don't see that going forward. But if it does, Rory could – gracefully bow out not having the time moving to london etc and speed lo and behold could come in and save the day if he's truly become a pga tour first never piffer and, and i don't know where he stands but obviously he sounded pretty confident about saying they don't need the piff money now as we've discussed it's crazy to leave three billion dollars on the table but like I said, I'd, I've said stupider things have happened. Yeah, I, you know, it's they have enough players lined up. It seems the, the on the PGA Tour side that they have made their bed. That 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 Spieth is speaking for the majority of players on the PGA Tour. I think that's a safe assumption because um, of, of Ti- and we know Tiger, who through his silence is speaking volumes. That it's all going according to Tiger's vision very nicely. Um, yeah, very nicely. Could not agree. Tiger and Spieth were brought in because those are two guys that the rank and file will follow off the cliff. And they are doing a good job of that. <laughs> yes, uh, they are. They're, right. they're so right on the precipice. We're there. throwing called so for our friends on X. Uh, we are throwing water. We're throwing cold water, or at least Dark Star is. On uh, and I tend to be in his corner on this one. We're throwing cold water on the idea that Fenway is in league with McElroy because of the previous relationship built around Tomorrow Golf League and that McElroy being a piffer is secretly or covertly representing an opinion at Fenway and that Fenway is quietly wanting the piff involved in the deal. Now, that's an interesting hypothesis because I... uh, (laughs) think that it would be uh, unthinkable. Uh, I shouldn't put it. I believe that it would be unthinkable for the strategic sports group not to want their capital protected by the deep pockets of PIF. And PIF can fund the uh, PGA Tour enterprises for as long as they wish, which makes your capital investment very safe. But we don't care about the money is where we sort of came out the other day on the previous show that the SSG doesn't care about the money. And so be it. You know, there's no piff. We don't care. And we're good. We're going to fund this thing for a few years. We'll see what happens. Maybe it gets better. Maybe it doesn't. But it's just pocket change anyway. We got 12 people involved here. It's 100 million each. No big deal. If we lose it, fine. Uh, you know, it's a tax write off. Okay. And that's, that's where we are with this whole thing. Now, what's still out there, and uh, we haven't been able to find any you know, I don't know, important breadcrumbs, that why is McElroy, I mean, really why? And maybe it's a series of paper cuts, I don't know, but why is he so strongly now a piffer? It's still a mystery to me, Dark Star. Could you explain it to me? Like, as if, and do so as if I were a small child or a golden retriever. That would be great. Well, a couple quick things then. Rory does not need money, so he doesn't have to worry about this deal, that deal, the other thing. Rory's thinking about golf in general, and he really is, you know, especially after this most recent Ryder Cup, good friends with Terrell Hatton and John Rahm, who, guess what, just left for the Live Golf League. So Rory, and and I think we've discussed his personality on multiple occasions, would like everybody to get along. And it's a struggle for Rory to play good golf when nobody's getting along now you look at me he played horrendously at pebble beach and i thought distancing himself getting off the board would be a good thing for rory but Mm. ironically it was a worse thing because now he's right in the middle of the two tours he's right in the middle of the european tour which is now moving i think towards the live tour um you know even a guy like matt fitzpatrick as we had referenced previously is angry at the dp tour for giving their 10 best players to the pga tour Mm -hmm. so rory again 
is and like I said, he, he's in no man's land. Well, uh, out of the fire into the frying pan. He, he yeah, jumps he, off he, the board to sort of give himself some mental time to get ready for Augusta, which he desperately needs to win for the career slam. And, he, he, you know, here we are again. He's now leading the Piffer charge and is in the middle of the press for that reason. But I think, and, and let's be honest, obviously they had spoken with Rory. Uh, Liv had spoken with Rory, I'm sure, on multiple occasions. And he had no interest. And now he's thinking, yeah. Shit, I should have just went to live and forgot about the whole thing and played golf and enjoyed myself because those guys over there on live look like they're having a lot of fun. And us guys over here on the PGA Tour with our no personalities are not having any fun. Can I point something out that's very interesting to me? And we've never said this before. This will be the first time we're saying it right now for the first time. You ready? Ready. Rory doesn't have exemptions to the majors. He hasn't won a major in 10 years. I mean, he's got exemptions to some of them. I, the, the, I, sh- I guess I shouldn't say it that way. He doesn't have an exemption into the Masters or the U.S. Open. The, the U.S. Open has run out, and he's won the Open, so fine. And the PGA Championship, he is a lifetime, sort of. Uh, so he, yeah, the, But the one he needs, the P- he, doesn't have, he doesn't have an exemption to the Masters. Now, would they always invite him, even if he were at live? I don't. I don't think if he was at live, they'd invite him. So he has some baggage there, and to put a little cherry on what you said, he's uh, had conversations with Liv. He's had personal phone calls with Yasser Aramayan. Rory can pick up the phone and call Yasser anytime he wishes, and Yasser would take the call because Yasser's a, sp- a fan of golf, and Rory is the top of that world. So yeah, they know each other. Not well, I would doubt that. But yeah, he could call him anytime if he wanted to directly and have a chat. Maybe he has. Yeah, I'm sure that they've been in enough pro-ams together, especially in he uh, Europe. Him. He and said Saudi he went over there and talked to him. Yeah. yeah, when he was in Dubai or whatever. For one of those things, yeah, they talked way back. That's been shrouded in mystery, but like in the end of 2021. So three or four months before Liv got really rocking. Rory had a personal meeting, I think it was. We can go double check. I think it was a face-to-face conversation with Yasser Aramayan in the Middle East, in Dubai, in November of 21. And then fast forward four months and we have the genesis and all the snarkiness from Rory about Phil being naive and sad um, about Liv. So what gives? I mean, Mr. Flip-Flop... Mr. McElroy, well, me, Mr. 540. Well, I think if what you if what if I'm gathering what you're trying to say here, you're trying to maybe say then Rory can relate to all those live guys that don't have the exemptions, all those great players on live that don't have major exemptions. Correct. And like I said, if it wasn't for this OWGR, and I would love to talk days about the ridiculousness of the OWGR, but we don't have, that's a different mm. show, but we, and we've yeah. done it. We've done that a few times, but not enough. They not need enough. to go away. The OWGR is not worth talking about anymore. It's, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Yes. But you look at all the great players on live that now do not have exemptions. And as you said, Rory hasn't won a major in a long time. He doesn't have those automatic mm-hmm. exemptions. If he spends two years on live and watches his, uh, world ranking mm-hmm. plummet. I mean, mm-hmm. nothing. Not to Anchors the U.S. Come. Open and not to the Masters, just so we don't yeah, get hate the, mail. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> He's got lifetimes to the PGA and to the Open. Essentially. Uh, but nothing, I mean, anchors go down slower than your OWGR ranking if you go to live. Maybe he could call Zal Torres and see how it's done. No, this is how you maintain your ranking. You don't even play golf, Rory. Look at him, I'm number 32. Play. I'm yeah. top 50. I'm going to all the majors. I haven't played golf in two years. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> It's still not well, unclear how that don't call Joaquin Neiman as he's having a yeah. much harder time, uh, yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, and, and has well, said so. There's no there's no points anywhere. So just real quick, Wyndham Clark received more points than all double the points than all six of the winners of the other events that were going on 
simultaneously with Pebble Beach. And guess what? It was a 54 hole. Right. No kind of like I said, well, he did play three rounds. I mean, he did get all the way to Saturday. Um, you know, and the PGA Tour does play golf in the winter now for whatever reason they've decided it should be a winter sport. Well, yeah. As opposed to when was the last time a live event was delayed or postponed? Well, early like February the on the Pacific Ocean. I mean, <laughs> why don't they just go to Bandon Dunes next time in January? Oh, God. Really make it exciting. It could be. I don't have enough Gore-Tex. It'd be a Bandon survival Dunes. mission, you know. Yeah, um, exactly. And, anyway, but I, I think to, to get back to what we were talking about, the point that you're making there is, yeah, you're right. Rory, I think, now can relate to these live guys. Hey, this isn't fair. Adrian Maroc is all of a sudden going to drop out of the majors. He should have been a Ryder Cupper for Europe. And, you know, this is ridiculous. We, we've got to come to some type of consensus, some type of reality. And we can't go five, six years down the road before we do it. Yeah, it's 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 funny that the, the PG, I mean, it's it's ironic. It's it's divine intervention. It's I don't know. You could draw up all kinds of theories about what just happened this past weekend. But the fact that the PGA Tour announces SSG's investment on Wednesday of last week, right before Pebble and the big the big first signature event, and it's going to be marquee weekend and blah, blah, blah. And then the tournament just disintegrates into weather chaos. It doesn't go at, at, at all the way they want it to. At least they got a winner that somebody's heard of, uh, obviously a major winner, that, that's going to win in the default setting after 54, and it's called. But other than that, and then, you know, Mayakoba from Liv goes about as well as it could possibly go. I mean, it, c- yeah. it doesn't get much better. Rom's in the hunt the whole way. It's a it's a glorious leaderboard. Kepka's there. Smith's there. They're all on the leaderboard. DJ's even playing well. Everybody's playing well for the most part. Uh, and then you get the fabulous finish. Sergio's there. I've left you. I'm sorry, Sergio. I left you out. You know, it's just. And the weather was, of course, great. Everything was terrific. And you know, all these PGA Tour fans are finally tuning into the live broadcast live. And they discover an important characteristic of the live coverage, Dark Star. They actually show golf. <laughs> There's actual golf shots happening on the golf broadcast. It, it's like, uh, hey, how about that? I don't have to watch the little blue pill commercials over and over and over again. You know, I give me a break. My lines. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just ay ay ay. So you know, it, I don't think it could have drawn it up any better. And then Liv's headed into Vegas this this week. They could have another spectacular week. They yeah. could picking up the the fans they picked up last week. And I don't know. I yeah, would love to see. Hey, Liv, with, when you send the next check, if you could put in the envelope, um, how many downloads are we up to for the app? I'd like to know that. Um, I really would. <laughs> they can see that. Obviously, they can see how many streams they're getting live and after the fact um, on both the app, the Live Plus app, uh, and YouTube. Uh, and the CW, obviously, they, they, they see all that, but they never have released anything. Now, maybe they've done, maybe it's low and they don't want to do that. Maybe, I don't know, but it'd be interesting to see how many people have downloaded the app worldwide. It might very well, I wouldn't be surprised to see a pretty good number there, Dark Star. Um, well, of I, downloads. I, I'm sure it's, I, you know, I don't think they care. Well, that may that. be true, I, but I'd like to I know. think <laughs> they are. I think they are on their schedules. They're hitting their metrics and, and they don't they don't really they're not going to get into a, a pissing contest when they don't need to. They're they're doing great. And by the way, as I've said, they have all the personalities. I you know, it's it's sad. I, I just pulled up the leaderboard here for the Pebble Beach and I'm looking and I'm going, you know, what, what's his name? Ludwig Auberg, uh, a bear, Auberg, Auberg. We're, we're calling him Auberg. OK. Um, <clears throat> works for me. He, he's a great guy, great player. He's going to be a star. Hopefully, he'll win a major. But he really doesn't have that great a personality. So you look at Clark and Auberg and Pavon, and I, I'm not even sure who Hubbard is and Detry. I, 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 those are the top five on the leaderboard, and I don't know any of those guys in the sense of. And Wyndham Clark has been in the in the foray lately because he's he's they're having to make him into a star because he's playing well. But versus the personalities that are on live golf, it's it's crazy to compare. It's it's it, you know they, they got to get these guys some uh, I don't know they, they got to get some standard jokes that these guys tell or do something because um, there are no it's, uh, personalities it's, left. It's just it's that's just, not a happy environment. I mean, it, you can you're right. you can walk but, into a corporation and you can sense when the employees are happy to be there or not. 
or if they're just collecting a paycheck. And uh, over on PGA Tour, it's just, just look, you're not going to solve. Right. In fact, yeah. not are you not only are you not solving the the haves and the have not problem. You've got the haves, Spieth and those guys going to the signature events. And now there's guys going to the signature events that people don't aren't familiar with. And then you got everybody else who's still trying to put nickels together. And that doesn't feel good, you know, when you got that situation and everybody's looking over at Liv and boy, everybody over on Liv is making money down to number 54. And huh, that's that seems better. <laughs> you know, yeah. And when when a guy like a Caleb Surratt who had a really interesting uh, first tournament. Good for him. And we were talking about him last couple of shows. Uh, very excited. And I was happy to watch him. That was really cool. And you know that they, you know, and then they win the team event. And you can imagine what Caleb Surratt, you know, sophomore, 20-year-old kid, he gets to go and have a lemonade because he's not even legal to drink. Probably in Mexico he is. But uh, he's having a celebration with John Rahm. And Tyrrell Hatton. I mean, you got to be kidding. What, but he's yeah, pinching it's... himself still, and it's Tuesday. I mean, what an um... now? What's he going to tell his friends, Dark Star? Back in you know amateur golf, college golf world, this thing rocks. <laughs> I'm having, and his, they doesn't he doesn't even have to say that. These other college golfers who are good, what do you you know? They're like, hey man, that looks pretty cool. He's Let's down reiterate. there making a ton of money. He's on a team with a, one, of, one of the coolest guys in golf and a great player and a major winner, a current Masters champion. And I want to go there, you know? Yeah. To reiterate your most important point there, these guys on Live are happy. And you can tell trying to watch a PGA Tour event, these guys are not happy. They're grinding it out there. You know, private equity is going to put so much more strain on them trying to eke out every penny. Like I said, there's going to be windmills on the hole soon at the PGA Tour. <laughs> um, it, it's it's going to get crazy. And like you said, Caleb Surratt's going to go back. Maybe he takes a quick jaunt back to uh, Tennessee and says hi to the guys and all that kind of stuff. Or, or, or he will at some point very soon. And He's going to, he won't even be able to contain his happiness. Guys, I made the greatest decision in the history of decisions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if, yeah, it's if easier they, than taking Charles Barkley. If he goes into a naysayer um, and they say, yeah, but you're not going to the majors, uh, then he's probably going to be in the position of, yeah, you know, it's going to work out. He's optimistic. He's a 20 year old. He's like, yeah, it'll work out. I got a couple of years. So that argument is not going to work until three years from now. So if three yeah. years from now, he says, yeah, I love Liv, but yeah, I'm not in the majors. Yeah, okay. But for right now, that's a tabled subject because nobody knows uh, exactly yeah. how it's going to work out. Although, as we said in the last episode, the majors are in an uncomfortable position. And yes. I think we're the first show saying this, and it's true. They are in a tenuous position because, as we said, just using Caleb Surratt as an example— if he gets traction, if he plays well again this week in Vegas and then again somewhere else, and or somebody like him on live, and they're not in the majors, yeah, majors start to look stupid. Yeah, they a couple comments. I mean, are you a major without DeChambeau and Garcia and Gooch? Ah, and Joaquin and Neiman. How can you Kathleen not have Joaquin Neiman, Neiman at the Masters? Yeah. And who's somebody on the yeah. broadcast? I don't know if it was Faraday. Uh, I forget who said it. Uh, Faraday talked about, I think, Gooch or somebody nah, like that. It was sure. somebody. It may have Faraday, may have, uh, but whatever. One of the guys in the booth said uh, uh, that Joaquin Neiman will be at the Masters. Put it in the books. Hmm. Put it wow. in the books. They're Because it's an invitational. Clearly, the Masters, we've said this, but everybody knows this. The Masters is an invitational. It's Bobby Jones' invitational. Anybody, he can invite anybody he wants. So we'll invite whoever we feel like it. Fine, they can do that. Um, clearly, they can do that. And will they do that? Because they even have a fungible field. They don't need to have a set number of players either, Dark Star. So, right. they, you know, they got plenty of room. That's not like a, I don't even know how many guys are in the field. It's not very many. Is it 80? It's, I it's think a small right, well, event. right as of now, it was like the smallest field. I think they only had 78 or 80. Yeah, well, and, uh, and, and yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, 
name's escaping me, just had to drop out. So, uh, because he's hurt, he blew out his Achilles. Um, so they got plenty of room for, for, uh, you know, Joaquin Neiman. And, and if they do invite Joaquin Neiman, which they should, Australian Open winner, um, just, and, and before we go, I want to talk about that event down there in Mayakopa and what Ram really brought to the table there. Um, the, you know, how can you not invite him and then still call it the best players playing here at, at yeah. Bobby's place? You know, the, and, and, and that's I another, can I just say, in. put a dot on that? And would yeah. Bobby Jones invite him? What would Bobby Absolutely. Jones do? He absolutely would invite. I think that's a yeah. foregone conclusion. I think Bobby Jones would have the best players. Yeah. Um, just to put uh, uh, to circle back to Caleb Surratt, you know, the other thing about the majors is if I'm him and I'm 20 years old and I'm young and I maybe I should be a little arrogant right now. I just like you said won the team competition. I'm playing well. Hey. My first major starts the Monday after the Memorial where I'm going to be in Columbus with all the big dogs trying to qualify for the U S open, mm-hmm. you know, and, and at 20 years old, you can look at things like that. Heck and and yeah. by the way, yeah. I can shoot at flags because I have a few million dollars in my pocket at 20 years. More of than age. a few, more than a few, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you know what I had in my pocket, there were holes in it. Cause I was negative at 20, yeah, really right. negative. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. Yeah. Yes. To, to all of that. It, it's, it's not gonna, it's getting harder and harder for the PGA tour diehard fans who've been pooping on live for two years now to keep pooping on it. Not because of the quality of play particularly, although that's obviously a big part of it, just be, because it's doing what it's doing. It's getting traction and yeah. just becomes harder and harder to stay in your corner and ignore it uh, to your peril. And, in, you know, well, whatever. That's not the show, but um, yeah. a, f- a fascinating turn of events with with Pebble Beach going down the tubes from a ratings point of view because they had no broadcast on Sunday, and the live event being a terrific event, really. Now, I wanted to mention Rom, and I want to mention the backup plan that DeChambeau referred to, and then we're out. Um, r- what Rom did, obvious to all the fans, I'm sure that are watching us, he. Yeah, he, how do I want to put this? If you beat John Rahm in a golf tournament, okay, are you, what kind of player? Well, you're a good player, obviously. Sure. So that's what he brought and brings to each live event. He's the reigning master champ. He's two-time major champ. He's arguably number one or two in the world, period. So every time he's there competing and you're ahead of him on the leaderboard, what's that make you? So if Rom finishes 10th at Vegas, then the nine guys ahead of him are nine nine slots ahead of him, theoretically, not literally, cumulatively, but they belong in the top 50 in the world rankings, whatever world ranking system you want to use, not the one that the majors support, the OWGR, which is the majors, okay? Let's not make any mistakes. The majors run the OWGR. Um, that's what John brings, really. And, a, and it's a, you can, even if you don't understand it consciously, you understand it subconsciously. Hey, that guy just beat John Rahm. How, how come he's not going to the Masters? Oh, which is why we're saying Joaquin Neiman's going to get an invite, among other reasons, because he won the Australian Open too. But that's that becomes all too obvious. You want to comment on that, or we can go to this well, uh, Plan he, B from DeChambeau? He should. Well, it's not that he should. Logic, as as we as our show prides itself on, logically he should be there. Uh, and and I think you are uh, not mentioning Brooks Kepka. He has oh, the right. Of, of, Sorry. I, of didn't, the I didn't mean to leave Brooks, leave Brooks out. It's just. And then Brooks, unfortunately, gets left out far too often. He has five, five yeah, yeah, majors. Yeah, yeah. He should. DeChambeau actually gets le- left off that list every now and again. Um, yeah. Who probably, yeah. well, obviously last fall, DeChambeau was the hottest player on the planet. And to leave him off the Ryder Cup showed that the U.S. had more interest in politics than actually winning the Ryder Cup. Yeah, thank you for putting So that can segue that. right into Yeah, well, it's B. a joke. So if you finish the top of the leaderboard, which Sergio Garcia did, 
this past weekend. Um, and Brooks Kepka's on that board along with John Rahm, and your name is above their name. It's, I mean, that's that. There's nothing left to talk about. You know, oh, well, are you as good as Kepka? I just beat him. <laughs> you see the board there, three rounds, I beat that guy and that other guy named Rahm. That's the reigning masters and PGA champions. Plan B. So plan B, DeChambeau. Uh, I didn't. I don't think he actually said Plan B. I think he said we have a backup plan here at Live, and I know what it is. Yes. Um, if the merger JV really doesn't come together for Piff and Live with PGA Tour, and he said this about a month ago, it was early December on a podcast where he said this: we have a backup plan, and it doesn't. That's not going to be good for PGA Tour. And he said it in a way like he. Had, he wasn't trying to be snarky at all. He just said, yeah, that's not going to be good for the... And I don't want that. He quickly corrected himself. Um, but it's going to be really great for Liv. So speculation continues as to what the heck was he talking about. Because uh, he is a, a thoughtful guy. He's a smart guy. And he's a captain. So is how far into the loop is he? Well, he's probably as far in the loop and on Liv as just about anybody, I would think. Maybe with the exception of Mickelson. Although I don't know that that's true. Um you know, what has he heard Greg say? What has Greg said to them? What has he heard? Yasser has talked to the captains. I think they had a dinner, in fact, in Spain uh, with just Yasser and the captains, I think. Um, in any event, so what is this backup plan? Okay, we're going to do a show on that next. I'd like to. Dark Star, are you on board with that? I'd love to. I'd love to do an A, B, C, D, E, maybe, what that could be. But it could be a lot of different things. Um but and what we have to go on, audience, is what Bryson said. He's, it's going to be great for Live and not good for PGA Tour. So what fits that description? Hmm. Hmm, interesting, very interesting. So we'll go there next. Um, I don't want to do it now because it'll take too long. But you want to, any closing thoughts, Dark Star? I I would love to talk more about the the official golf rankings and you know not one last point on that. John Rahm's Masters right now is worth less than Wyndham Clark's 54-hole victory at Pebble Beach, and, and, and I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> comical, comical. All right, well, B-Team is out. Dr. Darkstar's out. If you're a fan of the show, be sure to subscribe to our new audio podcast. That is where you will get topics that will never get to YouTube. <laughs> And there are a lot of those that we like to talk about that'll never make it to YouTube. So uh, look in the description below for the link over to Substack. That's where you can subscribe to the podcast. And thank you again for being a fan.